as you probably know, uh, I think about uh, Brother Nabil Qureshi a lot, especially uh, from what he's going through, stage four uh, stomach cancer, which um, uh, is usually always terminal. I was really hoping that they would give him immunotherapy first instead of chemo, regular chemo, uh, because the chemo probably weakened his immune system to the point where <clears throat> when they used the immunotherapy, his immune system was probably still recovering and couldn't wake up to do what it what was designed to do, which was uh, blow the whistle on the cancer and destroy the cancer. And so it probably just ended up turning on him, and now his liver is pretty much shot. So instead of becoming Jimmy Carter, who had uh, malignant melanoma that spread to his liver and brain, yet was able to cure it with immunotherapy, uh, looks like uh, this great apologetics Christian man, brother in Christ, is uh, probably not going to see uh, Thanksgiving. Anyway, I was thinking, you know, if I were a Muslim and I saw what he was going through, I would be afraid to leave Islam. You know, I'd say, okay, yeah, uh, Allah is... Uh, has it in the Bible, has it in the Quran, has it in the Quran that uh, uh, meteorites burning up in the atmosphere are, uh, are uh, actual stars chasing Satan, uh, that uh, Surah 96 is called the clot, that uh, mountains are placed down, that the sun sets a muddy spring. I know it says all that, but if I leave Islam, I'm going to get cancer, especially if I expose Islam like Nabil was doing after he left Islam. That's what I'd be thinking if I were a Muslim. You know, and uh, I was hoping that maybe God could work a miracle and you know have him healed, and so that fear factor would be taken away, so they could leave Islam. But apparently, from uh, from the time you're seeing this video, that's not going to be the case. Instead, it's probably going to do the total opposite, which is increase faith in Islam, make a lot of people Muslim now, in spite of Muhammad preaching that, or teaching that embryos go through a 40-day blood clot stage, which is why Surah 96 is called the clot, or the blood clot. Uh, apparently, what Nabil has gone through, or is still going through, is really just to make Muslims firmer in their faith, which seems very unfair to me if it leads to eternal damnation, you know? Now, the Bible talks about the mark of the beast and uh, people, end time Christians losing their heads uh, due to refusing to take the mark of the beast, which seems like it would happen under Islam if Islam were taken over, because, you know, Islam has a tendency to remove heads. Yeah. Which, again, seems unfair. Unless, unless, and this gives me some hope here. Unless there is a final universal salvation for my fellow human beings, which would include Muslims and atheists, you know. Yeah, the Bible talks about hell, right? You know, uh-huh, right. Yeah, broad is the road that leads to destruction. Few there be, and few there, and, and there is the road that leads to, you know, and, and few there be that find it, stuff like that. Which means... If there's eternal damnation, <laughs> the Muslims are right. We're worship. We're all worshiping the same God. We're worshiping an Allah, you know, because uh, you're saved through faith. And you find out that Jesus is, is the author and finisher of your faith, you know. And God's the master potter. He makes some uh, pots unto some unto honor and some to, unto dishonor. You know. Uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So really. If there's eternal damnation, we've got Allah on our hands. Because a lot of the Muslims are going to say, see, this is what happens when you leave Islam. You 
got all that struck him down with stomach cancer, died a horrible death, you know. In spite of all the prayers and fasting, and I prayed and fasted for him twice, plus, fast, plus prayed for him a lot more than that. And did it help him? No. Yeah. But does that mean there's no Christian God? Yeah. About almost four years ago, uh, I don't know exactly if I had bladder cancer, because there was no doctor saying it, but I thought for sure I had bladder cancer for like, because for like two and a half years I felt strange and my stomach, it just got worse and worse. And then I was pissing blood clots. I thought, <laughs> I'm dead. I didn't tell my family it. I thought, ah, if I've got cancer, I've got cancer. I'm going to keep quiet about it. I'll try to eat turmeric and, and uh, drink uh, pomegranate juice and stuff like that. And then in three days, I was no longer pissing blood clots, but uh, tumors. This looked like tumors, you know. They were white coming out in the urine, yeah. And no problem since. Yeah. So, if I did have bladder cancer, God healed me. And no one was praying for me. Yeah, so. But I'm just saying, though, that if this does lead to Islam becoming victorious in a big way where a lot of Muslims become stronger in their faith and don't leave Islam because of what happened to Nabil. There is some hope here that this is proof that there are some scriptures that hint of a final universal salvation. Yeah. I believe it's John 2 that God's reconciling you and the world. There's also, as an Adam all die, even so in Christ shall I be made alive. And also, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And uh, for we trust the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially those that believe. Yeah. So, in this tragedy, I see hope. I see, in this tragedy of such a great person as Nabil, I see hope that uh, eventually God really will be all in all. That he is working all things the glory and counsel of his will. And that, as it say, every man in his own order. Yeah. So, I mean, because really, <laughs> did you ask to be born <laughs> into having the sort of Damocles hanging over your head with a hell and stuff, you know, that you have to believe a certain way, you know? I don't remember asking that, and my memory goes back to the time when I was just a, a few months old, actually a few weeks old. You know, our first memory is breastfeeding, you know? So, and I have no memory of saying, you know, I want to be, you know, be born in such a way where I'm gonna go to hell if I don't believe a certain way, you know? No. Uh, I'm gonna see this as, I'm gonna see this tragedy of Nabil as hope for my fellow human beings. That God really is love. And we will see Nabil in heaven because we'll be in heaven with him. That's how I'm going to look at it. You know, I believe that there's help. I believe that there is going to be a final universal salvation eventually for everyone. You know, as it says, as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ, I'll be made alive. For we trust the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially those that believe. So, if it says all men to me, I'm going to believe that. And I think that includes women, too. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.